Yeah, I mean, another quality team. We schedule quality teams to make ourselves better and to expose weaknesses and figure out how to, how to get better with them. I mean, in our four, you know, we're six and four, our four losses. Those teams are combined 37 and six right now. You know, we haven't lost to a bad team yet, but we've got to start to get some wins against some of these quality teams that we that we play. So, you know, we don't have an easy one here. It's pretty much a road game being here in Phoenix against Arizona. And they're a really good team. So we, we, we've got a lot of work to do. Uh, you know, they're, they're scoring the ball in the paint. at I clip, I think it's 416 to 242 paint scoring that – Arizona's up on their opponents. We've done a good job scoring the ball in the paint as well. They've got real rim protection and ballo, you know. So, you know, we're going to have to figure out a way to get get the ball in the paint, score it. You know, may have to make a few more threes, kind of like we did against Purdue. But I'm looking forward to the game. I think we're continuing to get better. I feel like the best game we played was. Creighton game, I felt like best one before that was the Purdue game. I do feel like we're getting better every game. It's just we're playing very good teams, and we got to be great to beat them. And, and our biggest issues right now are, are we're putting teams to the free throw line too much and not getting the free throw line enough ourselves. I mean, we're essentially starting the game out in the hole with how much we're putting teams to the free throw line. So we got to do a better job defending without fouling. Arizona does a really good job of that. So if we're going to try to have any chance of winning the free throw battle, we're going to have to do a much better job on the defensive end of guarding without fouling. Start with Charlie Potter. Yeah, hey, Coach. Uh, obviously, you guys are going to be facing uh, a familiar guy in Jaden Bradley. Just what were the conversations like with him at the end of last season, and what have you seen from him so far? You know, when he left, he anticipated uh, Cornerly Stan and – you know, I think he wanted a bigger role. You know, and I mean, he's a really good player. Shoot, some people have his number one point guard in the country in his class in high school. So, I, I you know, I, I'm good with Jaden. I, I think he left on good terms. It wasn't like he just – he wanted a bigger role, and nobody had anticipated Quinley even coming back. That year when Jaden had committed to us, you know, Quinley blew out his knee and had to come back. And then when kind of all the NIL stuff came out and everything, you know, all of a sudden it made sense Quinley was going to stay in college even another year. So that that was kind of what went into that thought process. He's playing a pretty big role here on one of the best teams in the country. Again, you know, we were number one in the country last year. Arizona's been number one. So he's had a significant role on two of the best teams in the country. In his two years in college basketball, he's a tough, gritty, smart, hard nose, high IQ guy. And, you know, looking forward to playing against him. Jack. Hey, Nate, you also uh, faced off against Caleb Love and Keisha Johnson last year with, with UNC and with San Diego State. Uh, what do you remember from from those games and those guys and, and going up against them again? Yeah, Caleb Love's one of the best scoring guards in the country. He went at us in that Carolina game. And that was a tough, hard-fought game. Went four overtimes. And he, uh, he he's talented. And he's playing really well for Arizona right now. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we don't have too many guys on this team here this year that actually, you know, Sears and Ryan would be the two perimeter players that would have a chance to be matched uh, on them that played last year. And then Shot Johnson, I mean, they're, they're a tough, physical, great defensive team at San Diego State. He was part of that. He's the best rebounder in the country for players six, seven, or under. We've got to do a better job trying to keep him off the glass. And then he's just kind of a glue guy that does a lot of really good things for Arizona. And they're a winning team, and he did a ton of really good things for San Diego State when they won at a high level last year. Charlie? Yeah, Coach, you kind of mentioned it in your opening uh, about Arizona's size. I think they're one of the, the biggest or tallest rosters in the country. They've got multiple seven-footers. Just how do you go about trying to handle that with uh, your lack of rim protection? Yeah, I, I mean, they're like their size comes into play on 
with their rim protection, it also comes to play on the rebounding. They, I think they lead the country in rebounding margin over, I think it's like plus 15 uh, rebounds a game. So we're, we're going to have to do a good job with, so, you know, our guards can rebound the ball. They're going to have to get in there and help rebound. Our, our four men are, can rebound the ball. Our fives are going to have to do a better job rebounding the ball. But you know, I, I think the way we play, we can spread them out a little bit, you know, their size becomes a little less relevant with the way we play and spread teams out, but we, we're going to figure out a way to rebound the ball and we're going to figure out how we want to guard Balo because, you know, our, our bigs are going to have a hard time guarding him one-on-one. So it's going to be similar to maybe the ED game. It's going to be a lot closer to the ED game than it, than it was this last game against Creighton. Bruce? Yeah, hey, Coach. Uh, I was wondering, I'm from Arizona, Daily Star. I was wondering about, uh, you know, when you played Arizona, both teams, you played Arizona in, uh, at Buffalo in, in the in the tournament game. A lot of people here remember that. And I was wondering the difference from that game, first of all, what you remember about it, and then also the difference in in now you're coaching a team where you're you're so much well well regarded. It seemed like you caught people off surprise a little bit at Buffalo and then then got – got it going is is or is that right and is it is it different when you come into a match like this now yeah i mean i think that's accurate i don't think anybody was predicting us to handle arizona like we did back uh that was deandre ayton's year was it yeah 17 18 yeah yeah 17 18 that's that's right i mean we we shot the three really well you know i think we were 15 to 30 from three that game when i was at buffalo uh, they were still playing two bigs, very traditional, with Ristic and Aiden both starting. So Aiden was having to guard everybody's four-man. You know, in a similar regard, we're playing spread, taking a lot of threes here. But back at Buffalo, is almost like you're playing with, with house money. Like nobody, nobody expected us to win. There's not a whole lot of pressure on it. On our guys, I told our guys before that game, we need to shoot 53. So it's like, put them up. We ain't going to make them all. But you're open. We ain't passing up one 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 shot all day. You're open. Put it up. We end up going 15 to 30. And we, we that was a big win. Shoot, big win for the Buffalo program. Yeah. You know, I, I think here, we, you know, our guys at Buffalo believed we could win that game. I think here, but nobody outside the program expected us to even be in that game. Here, I think people expect us to be in this game. Yeah, they have a shot to win. It's a little different. There's a little more pressure on us here than there was playing at Buffalo. But styles aren't that much different. We're going to shoot a lot of threes. Shoot, I, I haven't told our guys we got to get fifty up, but I wouldn't mind getting fifty up. We got forty six up against Purdue, and yeah. Offense wasn't our problem. You know, I, I did think defensively, you know, and and back then it was Coach Miller, now it's Tommy, and they're, they're definitely different. But in similar regards, you know, Tommy's playing a lot faster, but they're both punching it into pretty good bigs. And I do think, our, you know, our guards back then in eight, in 2018 were able to pressure their guards. Yeah. It made it difficult to throw the ball inside. You know, I think our guards are going to have to uh, be really good this game. You know, I don't think this team at Arizona relies nearly as much as that team on having to punch it into like Ristic and Aiton, but they definitely want to punch it into Balo, and he's good when they punch it in there. So there's going to be some similarities between the two games. Yeah, I was wondering about that. If you when you look at them, the way they run, they run a similar tempo to you guys, obviously. But do you see a, a big difference in the way they go inside? Maybe more than than you guys in that sense or yeah i mean i think if you go to kempom i think we're fourth in the country in yeah. offensive pace and they're sixth if i if i remember right i think they're getting theirs off turnover they turn people over a lot more it's off turnovers are running it they're also racing it up and trying to duck the big in and punch it into the big right out of the gate where we're racing it up trying to leave the lane open let our guards get downhill shooting threes earlier in the clock you know they're I think they're in the 300s for three point rate, like 300 yeah. second, 303rd. We're, you know, I, I'm not sure what the exact number is right now, but we typically have been one of the highest three point rates in high major basketball. So, so in some regards, it's 
similar and we're both wanting to play fast. I don't think either one of us is going to slow it down. I mean, I think they, they want the pace. They want to punch it in early. We want the pace. We want to attack them before the defense gets set. We got to try to keep the ball out of the paint on their post duck ins early there. I'm sure they're going to try to keep the ball out of the paint with our drives early and we'll see who wins, but they shoot. Bilo can run for a big fella. He can, he can really move and get up and down the floor pretty well. Jack. If I could ask one more. Go ahead. One, one more. I'm sorry. Uh, just, uh, just wondering how the series came together from your standpoint, Coach. Were you the, kind of this semi-neutral home and home? Were you guys looking for that, or, or did they come to you, or the people in Phoenix? I mean, they're they're doing a whole double header here too. So yeah, no, it's the uh, people at the Hall of Fame brought it up to us, yeah. like the um, Greg Persino that kind of runs these events for the uh, Hall of Fame. It's a Hall of Fame Classic, so. They asked us, we, we we want to play the best teams in the country, and Arizona's been one of the best teams in the country, I think. Shoot, yeah. since Tommy took over, I think maybe they weren't ranked his first two weeks. Somebody told me that they've been ranked every single week since, and he's, I think he's on pace to be the winningest coach in his first three seasons in college basketball history, possibly. I mean, he's done an unbelievable job. We want to play the best teams in the country. They threw it out there. We also need quality teams – to play us in Birmingham. So we, you know, yeah, we'll play them in Phoenix. They come back and play us in Birmingham. So that was the agreement we made. We'll have a quality team coming back to Birmingham next year. And we're getting to play a quality game in a big time arena here in uh, Phoenix. Cool. Yeah, Nate, I mean, you mentioned now after the Korean game and even here with some of the foul issues with, with Nick and Mo. Um, you know, does that kind of start with them or or is that a little bit with the defensive scheme too, especially with with a big like Balo coming up? Uh, it's both. You know, it's who we're playing. But, shoot, that's two games. They, 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 look, Cogbrenner is really good defensively. He's great. He can step out and shoot a three, seven, one. He's not Edie and he's not Balo. Like, Edie fouling both guys out, he fouls a lot of guys out. In fact, we fouled out both guys against Kalkbrenner. Our guys, Nick Pringle didn't have one foul on Kalkbrenner either. You go back and look at all five of his fouls, they came on him having to guard guards that got downhill, him getting switched, having to guard, you know, some guards, different different stuff. But he didn't get any fouls actually guarding Kalkbrenner in post. So, those two, we got to do a better job with the scheme, helping keep these guys out of positions where they're fouling and tempted to foul. They have to do a better job being disciplined on shot flakes, not grabbing guys, not putting themselves in a spot where they can get these fouls on them because we can't have our starting center and backup center both fouling out in you know less than 30 minutes combined game after game after game. Like, it's it's not a recipe for success. You know, our foul rate is keeping us from being a good defensive team. We, we've we got to be better. So we're going to try to help them, and our guards got to do a better job guarding the ball, not getting it downhill. You know, we, we've got to do a better job coaching them, and they got to do a better job being disciplined on, on the floor, not, not putting their hands on people and fouling people. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, everyone. Thanks.